All right, so as you can see, I put in some miles on the Nike Epic Flyknit React, and you could see these soles are beat up pretty good, but I wanted to give you guys my pros and cons of this sneaker in this video, so stay tuned, and hopefully you guys enjoy. What is going on guys, Hess here from CollectiveKicks.com. Wanted to bring you guys this review. I've been waiting to do this, and if you guys have been waiting for this video, also leave a thumbs up on this video. This is definitely one of those pairs of sneakers that I think a lot of people are interested in, and I think for a good reason, because this new Nike React technology that they are using in the running model is really, really something else. Uh, but I wanted to give you guys my pros and cons about the technology. As you could see, there is some wear and tear on the bottom of these in a couple different areas already. So that is gonna be kind of the first red flag for this shoe is the longevity. Also, you can see the yellowing in certain areas. And this is just after like maybe two weeks of hard wear uh, of the shoe, and there's quite a bit of wear and tear. But is it a deterrent enough for you not to buy these? You guys should find out in this video. Before I get too deep into this though, I need to go ahead and try to clean these up to make them as presentable as possible. I'm just gonna clean one of them. I'll leave the other one kind of dirty. I'm gonna go ahead and use my rejuvenator to clean these up. If you guys wanna use code HESKICKS, as you can see on the screen, feel free to do that. The code did change for you guys wondering, and uh, you can save 10% off of your entire order. And shout out to their sponsor, Rejuvenator, and through the magic of TV. And there you have it, after cleaning with Rejuvenator. And it is a lot cleaner, and I got out that little lollipop stain that my kid had right there. But you can see the shoe looks pretty much like new, except for the midsole and the sole, which is the most critical part about the shoe and the reason why a lot of people are interested in this new model. So if you guys don't know what Nike React is, I'll recap it real quick. It's just Nike's newest cushioning system, but in the basketball shoes that they released in 2017 that had Nike React, they ended up encasing the React technology in a harder foam, similar to what they do with Lunar Lun, but in the Nike Epic React Flyknit, which is the one right here, they actually have just the raw form of the Nike React. So it is really, really soft and completely different than anything else we've seen from Nike in the past. It's basically like Lunar Lawn without that encasing again. And I have to say that as soon as you put this on your feet, there is a cloud-like sensation that we have not felt with Nike in quite a while. And I do have a lot of other technology from Nike, but I think that this one was the one that I was really impressed with considering the $150 price point. I've already mentioned that the Vaporfly 4% is probably better than this technology, but that shoe uses Zoom X and this one uses the new React technology. And I think that's one of the most confusing parts because it's competing technology in the same space, but this is more budget friendly. The other pair is $250 and really hard to get your hands on. This pair releases on Thursday on the 22nd and I'll put links in the description if you guys are interested in purchasing these when they drop, because I think that this is gonna be a shoe that a lot of people like and once they actually try these on, then they're gonna be like, okay, this is like Nike's answer to boost and in the best way possible. So let's go ahead and get into the pros and cons of this shoe. So we'll go ahead and start off with the pros. First things first, obviously this Nike React technology, it's really, really lightweight, which is a huge plus. And then on top of that, it has a lot of cushioning. The sensation that I get when I try these on for the first time reminds me of boost, but it reminds me of the pure boost, the original ones, not the Ultra Boost necessarily. The Pure Boost was really similar to this. It had very minimal traction, and then it had a big bulky midsole that was all Boost, and this has a midsole that is all React, and I think that this is lighter probably than Boost, but all in all, like it has that same sensation. It's really, really comfortable. I was really surprised when I tried them on. It was much better than I thought it was gonna be, especially since I heard a lot of negative things about the Nike Basketball line with React. So the fact that they actually removed that casing from these was just a really smart move. Uh, it does lead to some cons, and I'll get to those in just a second. Another pro about the shoe is the Flyknit on the upper. It is a plus to be able to get Flyknit for that price point of $150. They could have gone a mesh upper and gone a different way, but I like that they brought a new technology on the bottom and then brought Flyknit to the upper and gave it to us for $150 instead of maybe $180 or something that these potentially could have ran. I think another pro is the aesthetics of the shoe. A lot of people were saying this looks like the Adidas Ultra Boost. But then I've mentioned this also in the unboxing that the Ultra Boost really looks like the Nike Presto from early 2000 era. So it is what it is. It looks like a running shoe to me and I like the overall aesthetics of the shoe. I like that the tongue comes up a little bit and I like you have a pull tab on the back. It is a fairly simple shoe, but I like the overall look. And I already did a video if you guys missed it on the Adidas Boost versus React comparison. 
And if you guys want to see that video, I'll link it in the description. That video has done pretty well, almost has 200,000 views at this point. But really the Nike React also reminds a lot of people of Adidas Bounce. And I have to say that Bounce is a lot firmer than React. React is definitely a lot softer. So another pro about the shoe is I already mentioned that they're really comfortable, but you also have all day comfort in these shoes. I wore these um, like four different days at Disney parks and they were perfect. I brought my Ultra Boost as a backup just in case these didn't do the trick, but honestly, these were perfect and I wore them every single day. And I got home and I took off my shoes and everything was just fine. Uh, they were really, really comfortable. And the last pro that I wanna mention is you can actually wear these without socks. Um, sometimes that's a plus. I mean, I, I don't know, it's the really breathable shoe and I found these pretty comfortable without socks or with. When I was at the parks all day long, I definitely wore socks, but uh, for some of the evenings, I just decided to wear them without just to see how comfortable they were and they were pretty comfortable. As for the fit of these, I would say that they are true to size. However, if you don't like the snug fit across this section or you have a little bit wider foot, you can go up a half a size. I will be going up half a size when I get another pair of these because I do have wide feet and this section right here is a little bit snug, more snug than what I prefer. So because of that, I'm gonna try up a half a size, but true to size worked for me perfectly. So now that we've got over the pros, let's go ahead and get into the cons. The first one that I was just mentioning is the snugness across this area of the shoe. I personally don't love it when the tongue is connected. I like it when you have a separated tongue, at least to some extent. And this is a complete one piece upper. Um, so because of that, it's kind of a con to me, but if you prefer this, then definitely more power to you. I just like a little bit more breathing room in this section. But as I mentioned, you can remedy that potentially by going up a half a size and it'll be a little bit looser. Um, I like to wear them as loose as possible, which leads to another con that I'll mention, and that is the stability factor. A lot of people said, well, duh, just lace up your laces and you'll feel more stable. Maybe I get that to a point, but there is a little bit of stability because of the cushioning being so, so soft, um, it does feel a little bit unstable because of that. And so I'll let you guys be the, the judge of that when you guys try these on. Let me know what you guys think. It's not to a detrimental point where I think you're gonna roll your ankle, but it just doesn't have uh, the overall stability of some of the other shoes on the market. And that's just my two cents, but it is what it is. Leave some comments in the comment section and let me know what you guys think. You can see the wrinkling of the midsole. Some people definitely don't like it, but I personally don't get it. I mean, it's not a big deal if it wrinkles. And I think that the last con is definitely the Captain Obvious one of the shoe, and that is this. The overall wear and tear of the shoe is not really that good. Um, this is not gonna have a long shelf life on your guys' feet if you guys have these as your daily runners. I mean, this is only after like a week and a half or two weeks, and you could see I've completely ran through some of this section. And in the middle section right here, you could see that the outer layer of the shoe is already off. So that's pretty bad. I mean, there was definitely two sections that it wore a lot for me, this section here and this section right here. And you can see obviously that rainbow effect of the yellowing from the sole of the shoe. So there's nothing here because this didn't really touch the ground as much. And this is a high traffic area and a high traffic area back there. It's not like I was walking to grass or anything like that for the most part. I was really walking in just sidewalks and stuff um, and, and asphalt and that's kind of what ended up happening. But it really makes me wonder the longevity of this shoe because of that. I you. Oh, you're gonna be in the video? Yeah. Hi. I watch. You watch? I watch. It's right there, see? There you are. That's you. I up. You want up? Oh, so the durability is definitely something to question on these shoes. I think over a long period of time, these are gonna be worn down to the bone and a lot of people are not gonna to be too impressed with the overall uh, longevity. But I will say that it's probably worth it still in the end because the overall technology is super comfortable. And if this is the very first pair to release with this technology, it definitely makes me really excited to see what Nike is gonna be able to do with this React technology in the future. After cleaning it versus regular, Pretty dirty. And you can see right here also, really high wear area right there. Lots of wear. So my final thoughts on the shoe, are they worth your $150? And at this point I say absolutely, it is definitely a shoe that is gonna be really comfortable once you try them on your feet. And I think you guys are gonna be really impressed when you do try them on. And actually, if you guys buy a pair or try on a pair after you guys watch this video, come back to the video and leave a comment and let me know what your first impressions are of the shoe. Because I was blown away by the cushioning of the shoe as soon as I put them on. And I was really, really anticipating a great pair of shoes because of that. Minus a couple of the hiccups, 
One of them being the longevity of the soles. I think that this still is gonna be a great shoe. And if you have more than one shoe in your rotation, these will last longer than if this was your only pair of sneakers that you rocked every single day. But even with that, I think that these are a great pair of shoes and definitely worth 150. And I'm excited again to see where Nike takes this uh, React technology because uh, I was really, really impressed with what they ended up uh, developing. And it seems like Adidas really poked the bear, Nike being that bear, and Nike was like, okay, you guys want to, uh, to have cool, comfortable shoes? Like, we can do that, so let's go ahead and create something like this. I mean, it was really a smart move of Nike to finally release something like this. Now, even though these are gonna be more for performance-based, I think that this is a shoe that is definitely gonna be on people's feet casually, like myself, and I think you guys out there that watch these videos that wanna try a shoe casually, this is gonna be a winner for the summertime. So personally, I think this is this shoe is gonna do really, really well for Nike. And I, I for sure am gonna be buying another pair of these uh, once other colorways come out. I've seen some with the Black React already and I really like those. And there's gonna be a lot of other colorways. Once again, they release on February 22nd, Thursday. So check the links in the description. Usually the releases are 7 a.m. PST. So if anybody's gonna to try to copy a pair of these, check the links in the description. But I think that Nike has stepped up their game big time in 2018 already. And like I mentioned in the past, anytime there's competition, it really sparks innovation. And I'm really excited again to see where Nike and Adidas both take things uh, in 2018 and 2019. But hopefully you guys found this video informative to you guys. And again, if you guys did, hit the thumbs up button and show you guys the support on the video. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel, you wanna see other videos on my channel and the notification bell if you wanna be notified of when I post videos. But thank you again for stopping by and watching the video. And if you guys want to see other videos on my channel at this time, check the screen and you can go ahead and click any of those videos and watch those. But thanks again for watching. We'll catch you guys for some more sneaker videos soon. Peace guys.